judgment will come sometime in a few weeks. So the judge is a, a person who's appointed to make decisions and to try people. It's the civic, civil and criminal cases to try people to find if it is fair to punish them or to let them go. But it's a very important decision that's made after a huge amount of deliberation and after a huge amount of evidence from left and right and counter-examining that. And even then, they have to take time. Decision is made, but after a long deliberation. And then you get something called justice. You get something called justice. It's not even then. You know, it's not pure justice. It's not other. It isn't complete. It is perhaps there, no? partial. That is called judgment. What is it called? We all believe in the Yawmuddin. Is that right? Malik Yawmuddin. You know, Malik, the owner, the master of day of judgment. <coughs> judgment is really crucial. Allah is Ahkamul Hakimin, the best judge. Khairul Hakimin, the most superior, supreme judge is Allah. But let me tell you, me and you are making hundreds of judgments in a day. Some of those are legitimate and important. You have to make <laughs> Do I get up or not? Eh? For Fajr? Eh? Do I do wuzu or not? Eh? Do I go or not? Do I do this or not? Yeah, those are decisions. Okay, that's fine. But we also make, and we make them very hastily, within actually in milliseconds. Our brains are so well tuned and used to making these decisions. We make them in milliseconds. But we also make some huge blunders, don't we? We make lots of bad decisions. And that's done by something I call the resident judge. You know what a resident judge is? You know you have a resident imam, the imam who lives on site in the masjid. There's a flat, there's a house where the imam is, and that's called a resident imam. He's there all the time. You have resident doctors who live in the hospitals. These are the junior doctors, okay? So you have resident, and we all have a resident judge inside us. But this judge is a very nasty judge, you know. A lot of the time it's bad, a lot of the time. And this surah, surah Humaza, Humaza, say that everybody, Humaza. And then say Hamza, Lamza. Hamza, Lamza. Well, I'm talking about, today I'm talking about Hamza, Lamza. Hamza, Lamza is, I call this judgmentalism. So the title I've given this is Stop Being Judgmental. That is precisely what the Quran is saying. And I hope some, some of you will be wondering, you know, I've never read the surah like this. Eh? In fact, I've read it and never understood what it meant anyway, sadly. And this is biggest gustahi and bi'adbi of the Quran. Seriously. That I don't know what it means. I'm not bothered. I can read it correctly in Arabic. And even that props, possibly not. You know, if, if I was to examine you or if, if I was to get Qari Abdul Basit to listen to you, he wouldn't let you read two words. <laughs> but, but I don't understand. I hope, you know, this is, and it's not difficult. You know, what we're presenting is actually what is the real meaning, okay? I was studying uh, Imam Razi today, as I do always, you know, before I present any, I always read the tafsirs, and Razi is one of them, uh, Ibn Kathir was another one, uh, and um, Asad was another one, uh, four at least, yeah, no? And they ex ex agree exactly with, with what I'm talking about here, and this idea of judgmentalism that comes from this wonderful surah. It is amazingly powerful. This week I've been reading actually a book on judgmentalism written by one of my friends, Rohail Aslam, on how bad judgmentalism is. He's a teacher and he's written a book to help parents to come out of that, this rotten state and to control their resident judge. It's an amazing power, actually. Once you know how to do that, you would become, well, you, you will become the true follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Seriously, that is what makes the awliya Allah you know, the awliyaullah different from us. They were people who were able to make the right judgments. To make the? The right judgments. 
A lot of the time we make wrong judgments. So what are those wrong judgments? In the Quran says, Wailun lekulli humazatil lumaza. Okay? Wail for him who is Hamza Lamza, the one who gossips and backbites, who's looking for who's looking for wrong in people all the time. He's looking for for wrong things in people. Yeah? And then what does he do? Lamza. He does Lamza. Lamza is actually slanders them right in their face. Openly, you know, he would criticize them. All right. So he would gossip about them, backbite about them, look for wrong in them, in their absence as well as in their presence. He's not really bothered. What is he? He's hypercritical. What is he? He's condemnatory. He's condemning everybody and everything, all the places and the policies and the procedures and people around him, he condemns them. Okay? And then, very negative, very disapproving. Well, if you put all these four things together, you get this most negative person. And a lot of us, sadly, in our homes and perhaps in our comp- closer uh, circles, we, we display these rotten signs. Okay? And, you know, it's, it's good to recognize that because I know I have them, sadly. And, and you know, it, it's, a big, it's a big ask to be able to overcome these. But what does the Quran say? Wail. Wail, the Mufassirin say, is the name of a hell. Wail. Hell for them. <laughs> That's what it says. Hell for these people who are so judgmental. Can you see that? That's a very, so don't take it lightly, you yeah, know? Judgmentalism is actually the base of all evil. Well, it's based on, and we will look at what, what the Quran tells us, what causes it. Okay, what are its causes? Psychologists actually are doing a lot of research on this. Uh, you know, the Rohel, my friend who's written this book on judgmentalism, bases it on Dr. Gottman's work. So if, if anybody wants to look up something about judgmentalism, look up Dr. Gottman. Okay, and you know, they've really unearthed what the Quran already talks about. There's, inshallah, next week I'll be talking about Surah Al Hujurat, where again the Quran talks about judgmentalism as the basis of all conflicts. In fact, Gottman says 99.99% of human conflicts and wars are due to this. <laughs> due to this, you know, we were hypocritical, condemnatory, negative, and disapproving of others. And that leads to, you know, can you see the way Modi was talking about Pakistan, hey? And then. Pakistan is talking about Indians in the same manner. A lot of it is obviously rubbish. It doesn't have real basis or anything. It's, and that's what it is. It is absolutely hypocritical, condemnatory, negative, disapproving. It's not based on reality. Just like, you know, Trump always blames China. You know, this is China virus. China is to be, you know, openly. That, that is called, that is called Hamza Lamza, okay? And of course, what would that lead to? That's what would lead to conflict. Okay? So it's not a, something to be taken lightly. The Quran says. So wail for every one who does Hamza Lamza. I want you to learn this word, Hamza Lamza. Okay? That's the proper. And, and, and you know, they, they say Hamaz. The Quran talks about the Hamaz. This is Walid ibn Mughira. Hamaz, the one who back bites and gossips about Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's Hamaz. And then Lamaz, okay? The one who's constantly slandering. The one who's constantly having goals at, okay? That is, but Hamza Lamza is a, is a sign of this, displaying this judgmentalism. Allah says, for them is wail. Hell. I've translated that. Wretched, okay? They are wretched people, you know, who will, because the wretched is the one who will end, end up in Hell, he's the shaki, he's the shakiyun, the Quran calls, that's the wretched. Backbiting, fault finder, what does he do? <laughs> what is the cause of his, okay? A lot of the psychologists tell, say that, oh, well, you know, the reason why people are like this is because uh, they are actually too proud. They're angry and they are proud. They're angry because they don't have time to listen, okay? So they just want to make flippant sort of remarks and quick judgments. They don't have time, okay? If they had time, they would listen and they would see that this poor guy who they are condemning, this person who they are making these negative comments about, 
really has got a serious circumstance why he did this and therefore he doesn't need to be condemned. Okay? He needs to be listened to. He needs to be you know, helped. He needs to be shown empathy. All right? And that they don't have time for. Because why? The Quran says, he's too busy gathering wealth. <laughs> he's got no time. He's too busy gathering the wealth and counting it. And, you know, my shares are going to go up by 5%, 10%. You know, my wealth is going to go up. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. That's what he's busy. So he's got no time to spend and to think that, look, it doesn't make sense that this is a China virus, okay? If he did research and he had the proper knowledge and bothered to take time, no, he's got no time for that. You know, he's too busy. He's got other things on his mind. So, Why? Because this materialist thinks that his wealth and his money is what will give him health, what will give him permanence, will give him longevity. That is what will keep him forever and ever. That's the foolishness. That is the deception he has. Okay? So here, you know, the Quran is telling us what are the causes of, of, of judgmentalism. The other cause, of course, is hastiness. This, you know, the Quran says, man is very hasty. We just want to make decisions quickly without thinking. Eh? As soon as something comes about me, I want to give a f reply back. Okay? Without a thought. Okay? And we've done it, all of us. And we do it, all right? And usually, you know, it turns out to be wrong, okay? It's a wrong way of addressing things, okay? Ah, oh, Allah, the Quran says. Nay, never. Kalla is almost a qasam, no? You know, I swear that la yumbadhanna fil hutama. He will be thrown into hutama. Hotama, say that everybody. Hotama. It's interesting words. You know, if I had time, we would be even looking at the sounds. The, you know, this is interesting. The sounds these names make and the meanings they have. Hotama. What is hotama? Hotama. Hotama. Yahtumu. Hotama means crushing. The crusher. They will be, where, where will they go? La yumbadhanna fil hotama. I swear that they will be thrown into the hotama. Into the? You know what a crusher is? Eh? Have you seen the crushers in, the, in, in, in your car uh, junkyards? Okay? These, these big, uh, almost earth-moving type of big bulldozers. And you know, they have these uh, jaws. And they just crush the car into flat pack. Yeah, no? Isn't it? Yeah. You know, and it's one of the names of the hell. They will be crushed in it. Because we are told that the hell... You know, although it will be very big, but what is very painful, the painful thing is actually being crushed. Eh? Or even having, in a sense of being crushed. What's that word for being, you know, having a little, what's the word for it? Eh? Claustrophobia. Thank you, uh, that's it. That's it. Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is where, you know, you feel too tight. You don't, you know, you feel as though you're being crushed. Okay. So this could be actually, a, you know, this idea, even in Jahannam is so big, yet they feel they are being. Why? Because the fire is going to be coming in. And the Quran actually describes it further on Jahannam. What do you understand hutama is? You can't understand it. It's so, uh, you know, it's beyond your understanding. Okay, we'll tell you. It's the fire, flames that are rising, okay? On every side, the flames that rise like the pillar, okay? That was, but, you know, what we really want to talk about is how to avoid judgmentalism, all right? That is what's really important. Inshallah, I'm going to continue this because I think it's a very important, it's a disease that I have, uh, you know, of being hypercritical, condemnatory, negative, and disapproving. Yet, we know that Rasulullah is was not judgmental. It was not? What's the opposite of this? The opposite of this is called discernment. 
Okay? And the Quran talks about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says that, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيزَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ O Messenger, you were lenient. Because of Allah's special kindness on you, you were very lenient. You were discerning. Now, discerning actually means to take time to listen and to think, rather than making a judgment like that immediately. Okay? And so the Prophet ﷺ is called that. He's a discerning person. He's one who thinks you know, before he says something. So he's discerning. And then, um, you know, when Musa is sent to Firam, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيَّنَا Allah sends, says to Musa, Musa, go and guide this evil, wretched king, Firon. Bring him to my deen. And Musa says, Ya Allah, they've got a case against me. <laughs> They'll kill me. And I, anyway, I can't speak clearly. Anyway, Allah says, listen, Musa, take Harun with you. He's the other. Both of you, when you speak to him, قَوْلَ لَيَّنَا قَوْلُ Softly, speak softly, with discernment, with not being judgmental. Yeah, inshallah, it's a very amazing theme. And I hope you know you can see, you know, if you were to understand the Quran in the language that we speak. And I hope you can now see why you need to ha use English words that make sense and that are contemporary. Okay? Rather than using the old terms, you use the terms that make sense in the modern world in the language, and you will see the, how amazing the Quran is, how lively. You know, I, I read that whole book about judgmentalism. It's amazing. It's a very powerful book. Inshallah, Rohel will be publishing it soon, uh, or we might be actually publishing it. Who knows? But, but it's an amazing book, and we'll be running a course on how not to be judgmental, because it's been shown that children, you know, who grow up in a homes where they are not judged, where, where they see empathy and where they see that Rahma of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the good akhlaq of Rasulullah. What happens to those children? Well, they know that they are the most successful. They are the patient type of children. And they are the children who actually do well in their lives. They get ill less because their immune system is good. They're living normal life rather than abnormal, you know, of those who are judgmental. So it has, you know, it's been shown to have very amazing impact. And this is what the deen is all about. It's about goodness for us in this life and in the hereafter. The deen isn't, you know, many people don't actually, sadly don't understand and they're not interested. They're not interested. They say, well, let's do namaz. Let's just this, do this and that without understanding the wisdom behind the namaz, without understanding the wisdom why you should read Quran so that you learn these things and then you live by them. So you are put off from judgmentalism. So you are encouraged to be discerning. You are encouraged to be not hypercritical. You are told not to condemn people. You are told not to be negative, but to be positive, to be musbat, you know, to one who looks for goodness in others rather than faults in others. You know, it's easy to see faults. You know, many of you, I, I know, you know, you, you, you'll be able to see some people. I, I know some people, you know, who's the only thing they will do, and I, I get this often, you know, people's Oh, this was wrong in it. This is a mistake. That's wrong. This is everything is wrong. <laughs> you know, that is a condemnatory attitude, disapproving attitude. That's a negative attitude. You know, and that's a sign of failure. Failing people, you know, wail. <laughs> the Quran opens. Wail for these judges. Wail. Hell for these people. Okay? Those who are judging others, those who are always, you know, looking for faults, always wanting to tell bad things about. What should we be doing? We should be praising. Eh? We should be appreciating. Inshallah, that's another further theme that you know, we will consider. But I hope you can see how practical, how powerful Surah Wail is. I hope you will all go and read it. Okay? Some of our Mufassirin have done an amazing job you know, in describing it. But I'm trying to put it into modern jargon so that, inshallah, you really begin to see how powerful this is and the psychologists and the clinicians and the doctors and the teachers who, who, who see this say, wow, this is amazing. You know, this book is amazing. It is so current. Eh? And it is. Alhamdulillah. You know, may Allah help us to understand his wonderful book.